So this is the second hut we've rebuilt in this program and it's called Delaney's Hut and it's just about 10 kilometres east of Kyandra, between Kyandra and Adaminibi on the northern part of Kosciuszko National Park. We unfortunately lost um, 11 huts in the 2020 bushfires. When we were looking at which huts to build, um, we were looking at doing Delaney's because Sawyer's was quite close, so we had equipment and materials there that we could then move across to Delaney's hut. So it was, from a logistics point of view, it was easiest to do. So we were just finishing off um, Sawyer's hut, um, and then we were able to sort of start on uh, Delaney's hut. And the guys also started on Vickery's hut at the same time, so we were able to use, depending on the weather and the resources we had, we, were, we had about three huts going at, the, at once. After 2003 bushfires, um, 19 huts were impacted, um, and uh, three of the huts that we lost, Sawyer's Rest House, uh, Brooks Hut, and Delaney's hut also were lost in the 2020 bushfires, so which was quite heartbreaking to see them burnt again. Um, we went up and uh, recorded what was left of the hut from a historical point of view, and it's quite amazing to see the intensity of the heat, how it warped and melted the um, steel box boxing that we had when we rebuilt it after 2003. Um, and then you can actually have a look at the, this was the, the original Delaney's number one hut, which was burnt in 2003, and it looks amazingly the same the way the fire came through. Um, and all that's left is basically the corrugated iron, um, all the timber elements unfortunately were all, were all burnt. After the 2003 when we were reviewing, what, why, why did people love the hut so much? And people liked the shape and the, the look of the place um, and how they were built. Um, and so we've tried to keep the shape and the size uh, similar, um, but we've also added modern uh, techniques as well so to make them last longer. So we've actually used a steel subframe and concrete footings so it means the hut will last longer and less maintenance but people wouldn't know that there's steel um, underneath and also to try and meet the, the, you know, the building codes of today with wind and snow loading even though the previous hut would have lasted over a hundred years so um, they knew how to build them. So we've um, just completed construction of the timber frame and the roof um, and now we're going to start putting the weatherboards on the outside and we're lucky enough to have Paul Delaney and some of the Delaney family who are a descendant of the James Thomas Delaney who built this hut in 1910. Uh, I was the caretaker of the second hut after we rebuilt it and just come and do annual maintenance so I'm sort of the caretaker involved in the rebuild. My great-great-grandfather came up here around 1840. Uh, he was in Sydney for a while and then uh, moved up here and married a woman from the same county back in Ireland. And they had uh, three children. And then uh, one of those children was my grandfather's father, William. So yeah, there's always been a family connection up here for us. This was um, a photo of James Thomas Delaney and his wife, um, Ruby Pratt. Um, and um, he, James was actually one of ten children um, and he was the youngest of the, of the ten ch children and he was actually called um, James Thomas um, like his father. When you've got both the father and the son called the same it uh, makes it that extra challenging which I love. I, I think it's important to uh, maintain the, the, the history of Europeans coming up here and that pioneering era. You know listening to my grandparents and what they went through, like they were isolated, had to be basically self-sufficient and um, lived a very basic life, especially now that we're going into a very highly technical sort of existence and uh, pretty soft compared to what they had, you know. <laughs> I think it, it doesn't hurt to look back and see where we came from. So that's my interest, my main interest in, in working on the huts and things is maintaining that connection with history, our pioneering history in Australia. Them out now. We've been working with Kosciuszko Huts Association through this process as well as the families that have been um, either lived or used the huts um, to make sure that they, they, what their views are and how we should manage the site um, is incorporated as well. You can still commemorate that old site, the people who've got attachment to the site, 
but this is a rebuild. This is something to show you what was there, but it's not the actual uh, exact hut. So the framework was put up by Parks Carpenters, Roger and Peter, the roof put on it, and I made the door and the windows in my workshop back in Adelaide and um, we're putting up the weatherboards and we'll be involved in doing the flooring and the lining boards and a bit of brickwork around the fireplace. With the design of Delaney's we've used the plans from the, for the last when we rebuilt Delaney's number two um, but we've added some extra fire protection because we don't want to lose it again so the timbers have been treated with a fire retardant so they can um, when a fire comes um, they'll char but they won't ignite so We've tried to add extra fire protection to the buildings and we've also um, covered window sills and sloped them so to shed embers um, and we've also added sprinklers as well. So you can see on Delaney's hut you'll see two sprinklers on the roof and a, and a water tank out the back that we can attach a, a little pump and it will recirculate water and provide like a water curtain over the hut. It will keep going until the, either the, um, the fuel runs out of the pump because hopefully some of the water will hit the gutters and run back down to the tank. So we'll provide a bit of as much protection as we can for the huts um, in the next fires. So who would have thought when we had the opening of Delaney's number two 15 years ago, almost to the day, 5th of April 2008, that we'd be here again. And it's great to see a lot of people here from that first opening and it goes to show that again, it's that connection with the huts that really keeps these people connections going. The, the frame and the roof and all the structure was uh, prefabricated in Tumut in the shed and we chucked it up here and nailed it all together. So there was a, a frame, the roof structure, and the, and the roofing iron on there. And that's about as far as I went. Then Paul turned up and, and continued to do the weather boards and the lining boards and the door and the window. And then uh, while he's doing that, I did all the iron on the chimney and, and the veranda and, and the tank. And the, and that there, so it's a bit it. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, no, just add in that there was 100k winds and rain, snow no, and everything rain, else yeah. while doing it. It's that commitment of resources by parks, and it's a commitment to a philosophy of the network of huts by parks, which has really enabled this to happen. That has made a absolutely tremendous effort to the quality and standard of the huts in New South Wales. I want to extend a personal thanks to Roger and Peter. A big thank you from the Kosciuszko Huts Association for the commitment the Park Service is making to huts in the modern era. So thank you. On behalf of the extended Delaney family, including those who were unable to be here today, I wish to congratulate uh, National Parks, Kosciuszko Hut Association for the excellent work you do in preserving the park. It's a heritage for all Australians. I also wish to uh, express our sincere thanks to both the organisations and to Paul Delaney in particular and all the volunteers for rebuilding the hut again and what we hope will be a permanent tribute to James Thomas Delaney. This hut is an important part of the Delaney family history and the history of the Monaro.